So just how do you bugle on a diaphragm reed? We're going to break it down for you right after this. Hey everybody, Michael Batiste from the Elk Calling Academy, where we give you your blueprint for success in the elk woods. On this channel, we do elk call reviews, gear reviews, elk calling lessons, tips, and tutorials just like this one. So if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. All right, so by now, you guys have had a chance to go through chapter one and chapter two of the Beginner's Guide to Elk Calling. In this one, chapter three, we're gonna break it down and teach you how to bugle. Now, remember in chapter two, we started off with those drills where we started low and went high and we just kind of stair-stepped it. Well, guess what? That's the exact same thing that you're gonna do when you bugle, except this time you're not going to stop at each step. You're just gonna slowly go up the octaves. Now, Another thing that I was hoping that you would get in that drill is you would pay attention to the amount of tongue pressure and air pressure that you needed to hit those different notes. The reason that's important is because when you want to do different types of bugles, you know exactly how much tongue pressure or air pressure it takes to get in there. So without the tube, I'm just going to do a bugle where I'm not going to pause on those stair steps. One more time. Now, when you add the grunt tube into that, it's gonna give you more volume and it's gonna allow that call to expand a little bit. And then when you come off at the end, it's gonna give you a deeper tone. So this is what it sounds like through a grunt tube. So, how am I doing this? So, as we talked in chapter two, we have the reed on the center portion of our tongue. Barely touching it is the bottom note. I'm applying just a little bit pressure to get just above that. So, in our stair step where we did the first note and then the second note, right now I'm starting at that second note because I'm not doing the growl. So, then what I'm doing is I'm just flexing my tongue up into that diaphragm. And while I'm doing that, I'm also tightening my stomach muscles and my rib muscles onto my diaphragm to force the air pressure to rise along with the tongue pressure. So I'm flexing my tongue up into it and I'm pressing on my diaphragm to force more air onto it. And that's what's helping me go right up the notes. Now, once I'm up top, when I come back off, I just start relaxing the tongue a little bit to where finally I just drop that tongue off and go, oh. If you want to do a more aggressive bugle, then you can add your voice. Uh, uh. Kind of gives a little bit more attitude into it and gives a different meaning to the call. Now, the thing about bugling is once you really learn those different tongue pressures, then the sky is the limit. You can start from a growl, which what I'm doing with my voice is just going, and then I'll start applying pressure to go up. Take your time as you're going up to the high note. You don't need to get in a rush on it. 
Now, as I was talking earlier, once you recognize the tongue and air pressure, then you can do a lot of different things. Say you want to just do a long high note. Just apply enough pressure to get up on that high note. Maybe you want to just do a two note. So then you back your pressure off a little bit, start bugling, flex that tongue up into that diaphragm, increase the air pressure to get it to go up that next note and then that gives you your two note bugle. Now I know there's a lot more to bugling as far as chuckles and lip balls and all that kind of stuff. In fact, just this past Wednesday night on the Wednesday night or Wapiti Wednesday Q&A, we actually covered how to lip ball. Next Wednesday on the Wapiti Wednesday Q&A, we're gonna go over chuckling, so I'm not gonna go over it in this video. Now, go back to the drill that we did in chapter two where we started at the bottom and we went up to the top. What we're gonna do this time is once you get up onto that top, you're just gonna come back down one level and that's gonna simulate that bugle going up and starting to come back down the backside. and break it down into those sections. Once you get those that you can hold each note and stair step up and then stair step down, then you can start to kind of do the roller coaster a little bit. Then once you're bugling, you can stop at any time when you come over the peak on that backside to stop your bugle and that's where you add your voice in. Oh, oh, like you just did something good. Oh. It doesn't sound like much without a tube, but just doing that through a tube, oh, oh, at the end of the bugle, So there you have it. That's how you bugle on a diaphragm read. Keep practicing, keep doing those stair steps up. Now, if you are still struggling to get good tones or good sound, go over to the Elk Calling Academy Facebook page, send us a message and we'll chit chat with you about setting up one of our one-on-one -on -one calling lessons to where we can work directly with you. You don't have to live in the Boise area because we actually do use WebEx video conferencing. And the neat thing is, is I record your lessons when we're online and send it to you so you have those lessons to watch over and over again. All right, guys, as always, we thank you for your support. Thank you for tuning in for, to the Beginner's Guide to Elk Calling, brought to you by Elk Calling Academy, where we give you your blueprint for success in the Elkwoods. We'll see you guys next week.